In this video, I'm going to be explaining what Toml is and how you can get started with using it in your projects in just a couple of minutes. So to get started, Toml is short for Tom's Obvious Minimal Language, which was first introduced in 2013 and it was humbly named after its creator. Now, Toml prioritizes humans and this was extracted directly from the website. It aims to be a minimal configuration file format that is easy to read, that maps unambiguously and is easy to pass. So that's what Toml aims to do. Now, Toml supports a lot of familiar syntax. It has strings, it has integers, floats, booleans. So that means if you come from a language such as Python, you're going to be able to use it very easily. A typical Toml file will look like this. And don't worry, we're going to go over all of this step by step. So first of all, we want to create a new Toml file. And to do that, open up a folder in any code editor of your choice and tap on new file. Here I'm going to type in config in lowercase dot Toml as the extension. And this will create for us a Toml file. And config just stands for configuration. So this is a file that will preferably hold the configuration for our code. In Toml, you can add a hash to write a comment, which is very convenient for Python developers because that's how we usually write comments. So here we can type in something such as config file if we want. Then below that, we can start writing our key value pairs. So name can be set to my project, for example. And then we can add a version number for that, which is going to be 1.0.0. And finally, we're going to add a website. And the website is going to be example.com. I don't have a website in particular, but for this example, we will use example.com. And we're going to leave it at that for our first Toml file, because I also want to show you how we can load this into our script. As of Python 3.11, we now have the option to use Tomlib and with Tomlib, we can load that Toml data easier. And I'm also going to import from Pretty Prints the Pretty Print method, but that's just to format the JSON or the dictionary so you can see it in a nicer format. But here we'll type in def load Toml and it's going to return to us a dictionary. And all it's going to do is load Toml data from a file. And this is the copilot code completion. So I'm just writing this out by hand. But the first thing you want to do here is type in with open and we want to open that config file and we want to open it in read bytes mode as f, which is the file. Then the Toml data is going to equal a dictionary and we're going to call tomlib.load and we want to load that file. Then all we have to do is return the Toml data. So that's the entire function we need to load this Toml. And it doesn't have to be a function, but I will be using it for this example. Next, we will do if name is equal to main. And first, we want to grab that data. So the data is going to equal load Toml. And finally, we're going to pretty print the data and set the sort dictionaries key to false, which means now when we run this, you will notice that our data is going to print in the console. We're going to get the name, the version, and the website, thanks to the config Toml file, which of course can get much more complex than that. But for now, we were able to grab that information. And anytime we want to make a change, we just change the Toml file and it's going to reflect in our project. So that was the first Toml file you created, but there's a lot of crazy syntax that comes along with Toml that I need to show you. So now we have the script up and running. All we have to do is rerun the program to see the changes. So that means any changes we do to this Toml file will now be reflected inside the console, which is great because I can now finally show you what certain syntax does when you use it in the Toml file. So I will close the console for now. And what we're going to do next is create a table. So to create a table, you just want to add some square brackets and give it a name. And a table is essentially a group. So everything we put inside here is going to be grouped as items. For example, inside here, we can type in numbers and numbers is going to equal an array of one, two, and three. And we're going to have something called letters, which will also be an array of A, B, and C. Now, if we run this, you're going to notice that items is going to hold another dictionary inside it, which is going to hold numbers of numbers and letters of letters. So that's what happens when you create a table. 
And you can even create a sub table. You can say items dot, let's say details. And inside here, we're going to add updated, which is going to be set to true. And in Tommel, you use lowercase true and lowercase false for booleans, which is a bit annoying for Python developers, but it's good to keep in mind. Then we're going to give it an author name, the author who actually updated this. And it's going to be John Doe because that's what Copilot gave me. But now if we run this, you'll notice in the console that inside our dictionary or our Tommel file, we're going to get back first the items, which has numbers and letters. And then we're going to have a sub table that contains another dictionary of these items over here. So a simple way to look at this is that these are sections of our configuration file. More realistically, you'll probably have something such as a database and the database will have a type such as, let's say SQLite, so SQLite, and it's going to have a path of data.db. So that's some information that you would choose to include. And if you run it, you'll see that in that section down below, you're going to have data.db and SQLite in the bottom section down here. Something else I should mention is that all the keys are interpreted as strings. So if you type in 10, for example, that's perfectly fine. But as soon as you run it, it's going to be converted to a string. Also, Toml files do not have a null type, which means we cannot use none and we cannot leave it blank. As for the encoding, Toml files use UTF-8, which means we can use funky symbols such as the Danish Ö. And if we run that, it will run perfectly fine. It can use that as a key. And I absolutely forgot to mention that if you do decide to use a symbol that's a bit funky, such as the Danish Ö, you're going to have to surround it by quotation marks. This is the exception to using these funky symbols. Otherwise, if you use normal letters and numbers, you can just type in those as follows. But again, with the Ö, you're going to want to add the double quotation marks. And both single and double quotation marks work. When it comes to JSON and these other files, I just prefer to follow the double quotation marks. I feel like that's a lot more international. In Python, it's a much bigger personal preference that I use single quotation marks. And even here, I mean, if I were to follow my own naming convention, I would use double quotation marks. So I would recommend picking something and sticking with that or whatever your company wants you to do. But let's change this back to the file. So we have a file called data.db. And now the same way we created a sub table, we can create sub keys, which means instead of having, let's say type, we can type in file.type. And instead of file.file, .file, we can type in file.path. Um, so file.path. And when we run that, this time we're going to get a new dictionary inside that has the type and the path paired together. Next, you can also create an inline table. So if we type in inline table, for example, here we can type in inline and inline is going to be equal to a dictionary, such as name of John Doe and age of 30. And it doesn't really do anything special other than just create a simple dictionary inside the inline table. And this syntax can really clutter your Toml file. So it's recommended you keep this sweet and short, otherwise, your imagination is the limit. And finally, I want to show you that you can create a list of tables. So for example, just by adding two square brackets, we can type in, for example, table group. And this table group is going to be grouped together with other table groups. So if we type in fruit, and that's equal to apple, and then we create one more table group, and we say fruit, and that is equal to orange, or yeah, we'll go for orange, and we'll, why not just create one more? The last one is going to be equal to banana. So now we have three table groups here. And when we run this, you'll notice that a table group is going to hold a list of each one of these groups. So each fruit will be held respectively by each one of the groups. So that was the basic syntax for using Toml files in your projects. It's very easy to read and very easy to use. I personally love it. And I'm just going to bring back the example from the website, but you can also use this with timestamps, which means if you use a timestamp such as this one, and actually it would be a lot cooler if I demonstrated this. So I'm going to go back to the config file and I'm going to create a timestamp in items.details. We're just going to say timestamp. 
that's going to equal, let's say, 2019, followed by autocomplete, which is going to give me this timestamp. If you insert a valid timestamp and you run your program, it's going to return to you an object based on that timestamp based in your programming language. So in Python, we use date time dot date time, and it's going to return to us that object, which is super cool, but I'm not going to jump too deep into this because date and time is a whole different topic. But anyways, I hope that gave you a very good idea of where to start with using TOML files. As you could see, they're not that scary. They actually are very easy to use and very easy to create configuration files with. So jump straight into it and have fun with it. But with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.